Well, welcome, folks. This is Mr. Bergman. And I'm Ms. Samson. Mr. S. is here. We're back again for some KSP. KSP. KSP is kind of a cool topic, don't you think, Mr. I Sams? Do. KSP. Ooh, nice black screen. Black screen. Yeah, you know, I, but before we talk about KSP, I've heard there's rumors that somehow you are the only student in your high school well, to get an injury during a speech and debate. Yeah. i okay. got to hear the story. Uh, well, it's... It, it, yeah. Okay. So, we, All right, this is we're we're out of town because I grew up in Wyoming, so we had to usually go overnight for these things. So, um, went out on a Friday evening, stayed in a hotel. So it was me and two other guys staying in a hotel room, and we called down to the desk for a wake up call at 6:30 because we had to be on the bus by seven. So you know, three guys doesn't take you very long to get ready. Got it. All right, I'm there. Never got the wake up call. No wake up call. So, at, you know, 6.58, there's a knock on our door, and it's our coach saying, hey, where are you guys? Let's get going. So we're going, oh, great, what do we do? So we're throwing on clothes, throwing things in our bags, just grabbing anything we possibly can just to get out the door in two minutes. So I have all my stuff. I've got a bag and another bag, and I'm, I'm running down the Again, stairs in this bags. hotel. So big old flight of stairs, and I have my dress shoes on, of course, and I slip. And about, I don't know, probably 10 stairs from the bottom. And, of course, I'm moving forward very quickly, so it's either fall flat on my face or try to land on my feet. Well, I tried to land on my feet, and land I landed on, on feet. one foot. One foot. And I landed on the side of that foot and rolled that foot, rolled that ankle, and heard a pop and some excruciating pain. Ah! Ah! Yeah, ah. yeah exactly. And so they uh, got everybody else to the meet. They took me to the emergency room, had it x-rayed, make sure it wasn't broken. It was not. It was merely sprained. And I still made it back to the meet for my rounds, and I took second place in the tournament. You got second place yes, in your I tournament, did. even with the bum ankle. Yes. And you had a speech and debate injury. That is my speech and debate injury. That is your story, and it sounds like you're sticking to I'm it. I'm sticking to it. All right. Well, I guess we Never got the wake-up call. Never got the wake-up call. Blame it on somebody else. That's yep. usually a high school <laughs> thing, I know, yeah. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I lost my homework. I lost my podcast. My iPod froze. Yeah, okay. Your uh, podcasts crash my computer. No, they don't. Yeah, they can't happen. Okay. <laughs> We're going to spend some more time. What's KSP stand for? Let's remind ourselves or it, our kiddos here. K is the equilibrium constant. And SP is the solubility product. And product, of course, means multiplication. multiplication. No, it does not mean like the product of a chemical reaction, so don't get that confused here. We're just going to run through a bunch more examples. Yep. Um, the first one um, is I like to call the silly hydroxides. They are very silly. Why are hydroxides silly? Um, well, there's hydroxides in there, but there's also hydroxides in water. Yeah, see, so we have a particular issue. Yeah. Is that, of course, if I have iron 3 hydroxide, of course, we know that to be FeOH3. And the way we've been doing this... Um, Previously, this breaks up into Fe3 positives plus three hydroxides. Yep. But really, uh, it always assumes that you're in an aqueous solution. Yeah. And what's that, what's that mean, aqueous? That means you're dissolved in water. And, and if you're dissolved in water, water does this weird thing called auto-ionization. And it splits up into H plus and OH minus. So not only do you have hydroxides from the iron three hydroxides, but you also have hydroxides in comparatively a fairly substantial amount yeah. from the water because the K values of these things are so tiny, water actually ends up contributing. So normally we would say, if this was a regular problem that did not have, not have a hydroxide in it, is you would say this is S and 3S. Right. But because the hydroxide is in water, you would say 3S plus, plus 1. Plus 1 times 10 to the negative 7 because that is the concentration of hydroxide ions in water. Yeah. Now, it will change with pH. We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. But so this is so now we just simply plug this into our equation. Yep. Of course, the KSP mm -hmm. would be equal to the concentration of the iron, uh, 3 positive, times the concentration of the hydroxide cube because of the 3. Yep. So this would be, what is the KSP uh, of iron? 4 times 10 to the negative 38. Pretty small number. Pretty tiny. And that would be equal to S times, now watch this, 3S plus 1 times 10 to the minus 7th cubed. Now you just have to just plug this into your solver and solve yeah. for S. The molar solubility, by the way, folks, is always simply S. It is the individual S. Yep. Not the 3S, not the 2S, what have you. They're asking just for what is S. Some people like to use it X or whatever, but it's essentially the same thing. So what do you get, Mr. Sam? Can you uh, solve for S? I'm frantically putting it into That's my calculator. Is that a third power? 
That is cube. Yes, yeah. that is a cube. Okay, it looked kind of like a seven. Yeah, sorry. So that's that's right. My handwriting could be better. A trace. It is a three. Don't you think? I think it's a three, says Mr. Mole. Okay, he's still All frantically right. getting his calculator away, solver. Clicking away. Oh, All right. something happened in my solver. All right, I'm going to push pause while Mr. Sol solver... Times 3x. You know, to solve this, let's talk yourself through the solving. The solving of this one is I would take x, because this is on my solver and my calculator, parentheses, 3x, you have to use x's in the calculator, right? Right. Um, plus 1e, e, not plus, yeah, well, plus 1e, yeah. e, negative 7, parentheses, caret 3, minus... 4.3, what, what was our number? It was uh, 4 times 7 to the negative 38. 4.0, e negative 38. And that set that essentially equal to 0. So I think it should look like that. And then you're going to choose an x that's very, in terms of a guess, choose the x. It's going to be an itty bitty number, I'm pretty sure. So I'd use like, you yeah. know, as a guess now. Point oh 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 one or some number like that. Make a really really small guess, and then you can solve for. There we go. Now I have a number. And so what do you get for? I got four point zero times ten to the negative seventeen. So the molarity is four times ten to the minus seventeenth moles per liter. The molar solubility. Yep. Again, what does that mean? That means if I had a beaker filled with iron 3 hydroxide, which would actually be, uh, you know, the iron 3 hydroxide would be a powder that would set to the bottom, and the Fe plus 3 and the OH minus um, would o uh, dissolve to the extent of that number. It was 4 times 10 to the minus 17th molar. So that's essentially what that means. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, you know, we should do one more thing on this, guys. So let's just add one more thing. So what happens? Do I have a problem like that in the future, Mr. Which Sam's, one? about if we had a different pH? Um, do, 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 do. I don't see Let's take the same problem, and let's say the pH was equal to um, uh, 5. So the question was, what is the molar solubility? Let's add a question to this question. What is the molar solubility of the iron 3 hydroxide if the pH is equal to 5? Okay. So what you would do, again, you Fe, OH3, again, we dissociates into irons plus 3 hydroxides. Now, if you know the pH is 5, what do you know? Uh, that your pOH is 9. So what does that mean? What else, how is that going to relate to this particular problem? Well, instead of the hydroxide concentration being 1 times 10 to the negative 7, it's going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 9. And actually, that, this is confusing to students because that actually is the concentration. It's not 3s plus that. It just is 1 times 10 to the minus 9 when you say that's your pH. So you would say this is s, and this is 1 times 10 to the minus 9. So when you solve your problem, you'd use your KSP expression, which was what was it, 4 to the minus 38? 4 times 10 to the negative 38, yeah. 4 times 10 to the minus 38, and you say that equals S times 1 times 10 to the minus 9th, and of course you still have to cube it because there still is this 3 right here. And then you just simply solve for S. You just divide by 1 e to the minus 9th cubed, and you get the molar solubility here. Probably a much higher number than yeah. our previous number. What do you get? 4 times 10 to the negative 11. So by changing the pH, by lowering the pH, because you lower the pH, you have more hydrogens, which will then, essentially, when you add hydrogens, think of this from a Le Chatelier's principle. If I add hydrogens, what does that do? It shifts the equilibrium to the right because we're taking the hydroxides away. And so then, if this is 10 to the minus 11th, though a very small number, no question. It's still considerably bigger than, than... I think we're 10 to the minus 17. 10 to the negative 17, yeah. Yeah, so compared to 10 to the minus 17th, you're... Six factors, that's, uh, what, 100,000? 100,000 times more soluble when you increase the pH. And if we were to go like pH of 4, you'd do the same thing, and this would be like, you know, you change this number, and you could actually, you could, I actually know that you could make this soluble in water in a very low pH system, yeah. like, you know, a, uh, you know, pH of 2 or something. I don't know, we could do the math, but we don't necessarily. So watch that, um, is if they give you the pH, they're giving you the entire hydroxide concentration. Yep. All right change gears a little bit. There's always a typical question, or not always, very often I should say, a typical question in the AP exam, but also just a typical KSP question is, will there be a precipitate form? So if you mix two solutions, so if I have a, a beaker of one chemical and I pour it into a beaker of another chemical, I was trying to, there we go, I pour them into a beaker, will they make a precipitate? 
And there's this concept called the QSP. So if the QSP is greater than the KSP, then yes, you will make a precipitate. And if the QSP is less than, then the answer is no. Now, what in the world is a QSP? Yeah, that's... Uh what does the Q stand for? Can we it's the quotient, the quotient I think, like is that? what yeah. Yeah, it does. The QSP is essentially kind of like equal to the KSP, but not in terms of value, in terms of expression. Right. And the Q comes from your initial values prior to an equilibrium shift. You'll see. It's, it's probably easiest to do our example. So yeah. will a precipitate form? So here we have a situation where we have a beaker of sodium phosphate. Okay, so in beaker number one, I have sodium phosphate or sodiums and phosphates, right? And in beaker number two, let's, and actually I've got some numbers on here. This is uh, 0 0.00025 molar, the phosphate is. And then the uh, sodium is triple of that. That's kind yeah. of confusing. And then you've got barium chloride, Ba positive 2 and chloride minus. Now if you were to think this from a double replacement perspective, mm -hmm. it'd be Na3PO4 plus BACL2. Now, if you know your, your solubility rules, of course you make salt, but what's you, what do you know about salt? That's soluble. Thank it's you. soluble because it's, it's one of our nacolnosos. It's nacol, right? Yeah. And it, it plus barium phosphate, BA3PO42. Now, we have memorized that to be insoluble, right? Yep. That's not a, not a nacolnoso, so mm -hmm. to speak. And so, therefore, that creates an issue. So, the question is when you pour these together, will the concentration be high enough? So what we need to do is to kind of figure out what are our, our what is the <laughs> what are our concentrations when we pour them together because we have 50 milliliters of one and 50 milliliters of the other. Yep. I like it when you pour equal volumes together. When you pour equal oh, yeah. volume, what happens to the concentration? Just cut it in half. Yeah, it's PO4 three negative. Technically, we're actually using the equation M1 V1 equals M2 V2. But if the volume of one is 50 and the volume of two is 100 then when you do that, you cut your molarity in half. Yeah. So the concentration of the phosphate, that's what we care about here from this first one, is double or triple O two five. So if I just divide that by two, I get point uh, one point two five times ten to the negative four. Yeah, let's put an exponent. One one point two five two five times 10 to the minus fourth molar. Yep. And the other one I'm going to care about is the barium. You're going to see how this works in just a second. I think you're probably a little confused. You take the barium concentration, which was 0025, and you divide that by 2, and you're going to get 1.25 to my third, maybe? Yep. Okay. Because you see, essentially what we've got is we've got barium Ba3, PO4, 2. Now, I know in this previous thing is that we had this as a product of the reaction. Right. But what I need to do is need to write it in a KSP expression, so I just break it apart, just like we've been doing um, ever since we started this KSP business. So I am doing that right now, as you can see on the screen. But what do I know? You see, I know the phosphate concentration is this number, and the barium concentration is this number. So we know the numbers. Yep. Now, if these were the real numbers, then you'd multiply and get the KSP, but that's not actually how it works. Right. These are the concentrations, and if we multiply these together, taking into consideration the cubed on the barium and the squared on the phosphate, yep. then I can find the, what's called the QSP. Q, right. These are not equilibrium concentrations. These are concentrations when it's initially mixed. When they just mix them. Right. Exactly. Before it the does any equilibrium. Concentrations. Right. So now I'm going to say the QSP would be equal to the barium concentration, which is 1.25 times 10 to the minus third, and I'm going to cube that, of course, because of the three here, times the phosphate concentration, 1.25, times 10 to the minus fourth, and I'm going to square that. And I come up with what number, Mr. Uh, 3.05 times 10 to the negative 18. Now, what we now need to look up on the table is the actual value of the KSP. So we're looking in the table in the back of your book. Six. Or, you, you know, you could look. We have this table right um, here in our podcast, so you've got that somewhere in your notes. So what is it, Mr. Sanders? Uh It says 6 times 10 to the negative 39. So the real value is 6.0 times 10 to the minus 39th. So now we compare our two numbers. The QSP, 10 to the minus 18th. The KSP, 10 to the minus 39th. Which number is bigger? Uh, the Q number is bigger. So that means, guess what? You will Not. make a precipitate. No, yeah. If QSP is greater than the KSP, Oh, you it is make greater. Sorry, my brain went the wrong direction. <laughs> yeah, and so you got to watch that. Careful. If yep. QSP is greater than the KSP then yes, we make a precipitate. If this number had been not 10 to the minus 18th, but 10 to the minus 
you know, 38 or 40th or something like that, then of course you would not have made a precipitate. You would have not crossed the appropriate threshold. OK, 